Hello and welcome to News Tonight on Rajasabha TV with me Rajat Kane. Let's have a look at the top headlines. Whistleblower claims that Congress party may have used the services of data analysis firm Cambridge Analytica in India tells UK parliamentary panels that data misused by firm is likely to have influenced the Brexit vote. Stalemate prevents Upper House from taking up even favourable addresses of retiring members. Raj Sabha chairman expresses anguish, tells members he'll be forced to take stringent action to end the disruptions that are bringing disgrace to the House. Karnataka Assembly elections on May 12th, results to be announced on May 15th. Election Commission to investigate how dates were tweeted before it announced them at its press conference. Kappa Chayats can't end marriages between consenting adults. Supreme Court lays guidelines to prevent interference. It says norms will remain in force till Parliament enact laws. And last chance for taxpayers to file belated income tax returns for the last two years. All income tax department office to remain open without holiday from March 29th till 31st March. A top story. Cambridge Analytica whistleblower Christopher Wiley today said that Congress party could have employed the services in India. Wiley was giving the statement while deposing in front of UK Parliamentary Committee. He said Cambridge Analytica had worked extensively in India and Congress was its client. Wiley also said the data firm tried to influence 2014 Brexit referendum. Facebook's uh, biggest user markets. If you, if you make a, a speciality out of using Facebook and surveys, and I don't know how many Alexander Kogans there are who have worked with uh, Cambridge Analytica, uh, you, you, you focus on the world's biggest democracy with uh, lots and lots of elections all the time, uh, India, as being a, a prime source of business, wouldn't you? And you, you mentioned that they'd done quite a bit of work in India. Could you just describe what you're aware of? Um, I believe, I believe their, their client was Congress, um, but I know that they, um, they've done all kinds of uh, projects both regional. I don't think they've done an. I don't remember a national national project, but I know regionally. I mean, India is different states. Uh, yeah, I mean, India is so big that you know, w one state can be you know as big as Britain. Mm. Um, uh, but they they do have offices there. They do have staff there. Um, I believe I have some documentation on India, which I can also provide to the committee if, you, if that's no, that very, yes. very yeah. welcome. Now, soon after Christopher Wiley's statement, Law Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad asked Congress President Rahul Gandhi to apologize to the country. He said it's now clear that Congress had links with the rogue data analysis firm. Today, I demand that Congress party must apologize to the nation. We also demand Mr. Rahul Gandhi must apologize to the nation. No more false alibi will absolve the Congress party from a blatant lie which they spoke before the country that we have not used the services of Cambridge Analytica. A company under serious clout for influencing elections in America, in Argentina, in Brazil and also India was taken by the Congress party to influence voting behavior. Have they become so desperate? They don't trust the people? The disruptions prevented Raj Sabha from taking up even farewell addresses by the retiring members today. Nearly 40 members are retiring from the upper house this session. It's customary for them to address the house before they formally retire. The farewell addresses are now likely to be taken up tomorrow. The stalemate continued in the Rajya Sabha on the 16th day in a row as TDP members and KVP Ramchand Rao of the Congress Party raised the demand of special status for Andhra Pradesh. The AIADMK continued to seek the constitution of Kaveri Water Management Board. The disruptions continued even as Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu 
urged members to allow the house to function so that retiring members could be accorded farewell. We have a quite good number of MPs uh, retiring from Rajya Sabha. Please, say farewell. This is not fair. No, 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 please. Mr. Maitreyan, don't do it. No, 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 this is not correct. This is not the way. We don't have a courtesy towards the retiring members. We don't have even courtesy for the retiring members. You people also may retire one day. Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs Vijay Goel also appealed to the MPs to let the House function and assured them that all issues could be discussed after the farewell. बहुत सारे लोग जिन्होंने छह साल तक राज्यसभा के अंदर सर्व किया है, राज्यसभा में अपना योगदान दिया है, वो रिटायर हो रहे हैं। तो ऐसे के अंदर सभी पार्टियों को चाहिए और खास तौर से जो लोग वेल में आए हैं कि आज उनका निर्वल है, तो वो कम से कम अपना अपने अनुभव और अपनी यादें रखना चाहेंगे, तो उनको वे � सरकार के पास भी बहुत काम काज है। अगर आपके पास कोई विषय है, तो सरकार उसपे चर्चा करने के लिए तैयार है। As the appeals went unheeded, the chair adjourned the house for 15 minutes. Very wrong, very wrong, very wrong, totally undemocratic, unbecoming of the members of parliament. Please don't do this. You are not going to be helped in any way by this sort of shouting and showing of these play cards. Your cause is not getting. In his strength, you are weakening your cause. When the House reassembled, AIADMK members continued their protests. The Chairman once again appealed for order in the House. This is a very important occasion today because more than 40 of our colleagues who have been with us in this House, they are retiring. And they, we want to give them farewell, wish them best of luck, and they also want to express their views and their, ex their experience also. Keeping that in mind, I appeal to all political parties, whatever may be your issues, whatever may be your demands, that can be taken up subsequently as and when the situation arises. But today, please allow this important occasion to go on peacefully and also in a dignified manner. I appeal to all of you, please take your respective seats, cooperate with the chair, the entire country is watching. However, when the AIADMK members did not relent, Chairman Naidu adjourned the House till Wednesday. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. The no confidence motion could not be taken up in the Lok Sabha on Tuesday as well as there was no order in the House. With opposition protests disrupting the proceedings, Lok Sabha was adjourned till Wednesday. Disruption started in the Lok Sabha as soon as the House met for the day. ADMK members walked into the well demanding setting up of Kaveri River Management Board. Amid protests, the House was adjourned till 12 noon. The House stands adjourned to meet again at 12 o'clock. Papers were laid when the House reassembled. The Speaker informed the House of the no-confidence notices from members of various parties. However, the motion could not be taken up due to noisy protest. Members belonging to Congress, TDP, YSR Congress, left and other opposition parties displayed placards in support of the no-confidence motion notices given by them. Amid the din, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Ananta Kumar said the government was ready for any discussion. <laughs> Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan also urged the members to end their protest and allow the House to function. Protesting members refusing to relent, the House was adjourned for the day. The House stands adjourned to meet again on Wednesday. Navvikram Singh's report for Raj Sabha TV. Now, an attempt to resolve the ongoing stalemate in Lok Sabha, Speaker Sumitra Mahajan on Tuesday reached out to leaders of political parties.
after the first adjournment of Lok Sabha. Speaker Mahajan met leaders from Congress, including Malikarjun Kharge and Jyotir Aditya Sindhya. She also met leaders of ADMK, Shiv Sena, Trinamool Congress, YSR Congress, TRS and BJD, among others. She also held a meeting with Parliamentary Affairs Minister Ananta Kumar and other BJP leaders to discuss ways to end the impasse. The Speaker is also considering convening an all-party meeting. Little business has been conducted in both Houses of Parliament in the second half of budget session due to continuous disruptions by the opposition parties over multiple issues. Now, deeply anguish that Raj Sabha was not able to even bid farewell to retiring members, Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu met leaders of various political parties in an attempt to resolve the stalemate in the House. After Chairman's outreach, sources said there is hope that Upper House working smoothly on Wednesday. During meeting of the members of the parties, including the BJP, Congress, TDP, ADMK, NCP and BJD, the Chairman said the stalemate was bringing disgrace to the House besides eroding democracy. He also questioned the rationale for prolonged disruptions when he had agreed to allow discussion on each and every issue and when even the opposition and ruling parties were ready for debates on various issues. The chairman said he was running out of options and would be forced to take stringent action in order to ensure order in the House. Several members also shared chairman's concern. Several suggestions were also made to the chairman, including allowing members into the well of the House without placards. Now, speaking to Raj Sabha Television, Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs, Vishay Goyal, said Raj Sabha may function on Wednesday to accord favour to retiring members. He also said constant efforts have been made by the government to end the ongoing impasse. Joining me is MOS Parliamentary Affairs, Mr. Vijay Goyal. Sir, disruptions continued yet again. In fact, the Raj Sabha could not even accord farewell to the retiring members. It's a Samvedan Shil Din. और भावुक दिन होता है जिसमें सभी पार्टियां जो सदस्य रिटायर्ड हो रहे होते हैं उनके बारे में या सदन के बारे में विचार रखते हैं पर मैंने देखा है आज भी सदन को चलने नहीं दी गया और मजबूरी के अंदर चेयरमैन को फिर अर्जॉन करना पड़ा सदन पर कल मैं समझता हूं कि हम कर पाएंगे इस को और सदन की अब दिन भी कुछ नहीं रह गए हैं कि कुल छः अप्रैल तक संसद है और इसके अंदर सरकार के पास बहुत सारा एजेंडा है बहुत सारे महत्वपूर्ण बिल हैं जो पास करने हैं यू ट्राई टू रीच आउट टू द ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज यू इनफैक्ट स्पोक टू लीडर ऑफ ऑपोजिशन मिस्टर गुलाम नबी आजाद यू रीच आउट टू मैथ्री एन हुज द मेंबर ऑफ ए आई ए डी एम के वट डू थिंक कंसेंसिस कुड बी बिल्ट सो दैट दिस लॉक जैम कुड बी एंडेड कहते तो हैं कि भाई हम सहयोग देंगे हम चर्चा चाहते हैं पर अंत में कथनी करनी में फर्क हो जाता है और वो लोग सब अब नंबर स्कोर करने में लगे हुए हैं Thank you so much for talking to us. Reporting from Parliament with Canada person Raj Thakur. I'm Kriti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. A ceremony was held in Parliament to bid farewell to retiring members of Rajya Sabha. Chairman M Venkaiah Naidu, Prime Minister Modi, Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan, Deputy Chairman P J Kurian, former Prime Minister Dr Manmohan Singh, Rajya Sabha General Secretary Desh Deepak Verma were present at the ceremony among others. 65 members of Rajya Sabha are retiring this year. Now, the Election Commission on Tuesday said voting for Karnataka Assembly elections will be held on 12th of May in a single phase for all 224 seats. Meanwhile, the political temperatures in the state is on a steep climb with Congress President Rahul Gandhi and BJP President Amit Shah of campaigning in the battleground constituencies. The Karnataka Assembly elections will be held on May 12th. Announcing the date, the Election Commission said the model code comes into effect from Tuesday. Addressing a press conference in New Delhi, Chief Election Commissioner Om Prakash Rawat said the single-phase polling will be held for all 224 seats. Counting of votes will be on May 15th. Notification for the elections will be issued on April 17th, while the last date to file nomination will be April 24th. Scrutiny of nominations will be on April 25th, while the last day to withdraw candidature will be April 27th. It is a single phase election because when commission visited Karnataka, almost all the parties were of the view that it should be a single phase election. And therefore, keeping in view their demand, it is single phase election with notification on 17th April 2018. The Election Commission said that all electronic voting machines will be linked to voter-verifiable paper audit trail machines. 
A little less than 5 crore voters will exercise their franchise to elect members for the 224 assembly constituencies. The election commission further said 450 special polling stations will be managed by women. In order to ensure smooth polling, Central Armed Police Force will be deployed to all 56,696 polling booths across the state. Special arrangements are being made for women. In fact, all women managed polling stations, including the security, will be five in every urban constituency and one in every rural constituency. So in all more than 450 polling stations, will be managed by all women. As you all know, that commission had committed to all parties that along with the electronic voting machines, VVPET shall be deployed in all future elections. And therefore, in line with that decision, all polling stations will have electronic voting machine and VVPET deployed there. The contest in the state is between the ruling Congress, BJP and the JDS. Panjanan Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. For more on the story, we are joined by senior journalist Sachin Murthy, resident editor of The Week magazine. Mr. Murthy, very much welcome to our show. Uh, we would like to know, it will be a long campaign, given there is a, the elections would be held on the May 12th, so there is 45 days to go for it. What important issues do you see would be dominating the election campaigning of three major parties? Well, very interestingly, uh, most of the, all the parties, uh, there is a Congress, the BJP and the Janata Dal Secular, have gone into a campaign mode six months ago. Uh, uh, if we look at the BJP, for example, party president Amit Shah declared the, his mission 150, that is a to win 150 of the 224 constituencies, two-thirds majority, more than a year ago. And he has visited the state number of times. So has the Union uh, Human Resource Minister Prakash Javdekar and other senior leaders. Prime Minister Narendra Modi himself has held uh, more than four or five rallies in Karnataka. Similarly, the Chief Minister Sidramaya, uh, towards the end of last uh, year, he went to all the 30 districts for intensive campaigning. And uh, Janata Dal Secular has uh, a program called Mane Manege Kumarana, that is Kumar Swami to every home. So though Kumar Swami has been uh, unwell for some time due to a second major heart surgery, but his father, Mr. Devagauda, the former Prime Minister who has been in politics for 56 years, he has been campaigning uh, around the state. So that way Karnataka has been in the election mode. But now the coming period is very crucial because uh, the candidates will be in place and that stage now the political parties will be very busy with uh, selecting the candidates. Do you think uh, the issue of Lingayat uh, would be among the dominant narratives of the election campaigning? The Lingayat issue is uh, very much on the boil in Karnataka now because of the very recent cabinet decision that the Lingayats deserve to be called a separate religion and no more a caste of the uh, Hindu religion. So this, the, this demand had been there from a section of the Lingayats and another section has been saying that no, we are uh, Shiva worshippers, so we are Hindus. But yes, we are a distinct caste group. But uh, the thing now is that this community for the last five elections has by and large monolithically voted for the Bharatiya Janata Party and its leader B.S. Yadiyurappa. He is the only Lingayat Virashaiva chief ministerial candidate in the race now. So now the community is divided on this issue. How, how does it work? Yeah. This campaign will be strong. Already we have the report from yesterday that Amit Shah, BJP president, has visited the various Lingayat the spiritual muts to meet the uh, Jagat Guru. And uh, so did uh, Rahul Gandhi when he toured Karnataka. Uh, three times he has already been there. So only the Janata Dal Secular, which doesn't much depend on the, uh, depend on the Lingayat votes, it is uh, not, it has not made an issue of it. But I'm sure even Janata Dal Secular will exploit this issue by fielding uh, strategic candidates in uh, places where there's a strong uh, 
Lingayat versus Lingayat contest. Coming to Janata Dal Secular, which, which happens to be the third but not a silent party to say off, uh, it may not be the prominent force uh, these days in Karnataka. It has an interesting tie up with the BSP. Now, BSP is predominantly North Indian party. Do we see the alliance having any traction on the ground? Uh, in Karnataka elections, uh, ever since B BSP started contesting these elections, its vote share has never been very significant. But <clears throat> there is a fascination for Mayavati among uh, some uh, groups of Dalits, especially in North Karnataka. But it, it, how, how much of that vote, share, vote base is there, that has never been um, big. But then I think what uh, uh, Mr. Devagoda, when he went for alliance with Mayavati, wanted to convey the message was that Mr. Sidramaya has trying to monopolize the Dalit vote, saying that his is a great uh, caste and religion combination of uh, backward Dalits and uh, minorities. So I think uh, Mr. Devagoda is hoping to make a dent, but I'm not very sure. Maybe the BJP will get more Dalit votes than Janta Dal Secular. Right, right. Thanks, Mr. Murthy, for all the insight. Thanks for joining Pratis TV. In a related news, the Election Commission has ordered a probe into Karnataka Assembly election dates being tweeted allegedly even before it had announced it. The tweet came from BJP's IT cell chief Amit Malviya, leading to the Congress to dub BJP a Super Election Commission. The Election Commission has constituted a committee of senior officers that will give its report in seven days. The committee will also suggest steps needed to prevent missteps in future. इस पर कानून के अनुसार प्रशासनिक दृष्टि से कठोरतम कार्रवाई करने में कमीशन बिल्कुल हिचकेगा नहीं इन्वेस्टिगेशन के बाद जो भी फैक्ट्स आते हैं जो भी जिम्मेदारी तय होती है उसके आधार पर तो इसका मतलब यह है कि बीजेपी पार्टी इलेक्शन कमीशन को डिक्टेट कर रही है डेट कौन से होना चाहिए लेकिन मैं फिर भी इलेक्शन कमीशन से यह अपेक्षा करता हूं कि वो संविधान के मुताबिक चले ऐसे इंफॉर्मेशन लीक न होने देना और कानून के तहत वो काम करे After Congress allegation, the BJP delegation led by Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi went to Election Commission. Amit Malvi also wrote a letter to Election Commission stating that his tweet was based on a news channel report. He also mentioned in the letter that Congress social media in charge of Karnataka also sent out a similar tweet. भारतीय जनता पार्टी चुनाव आयोग की पूरी जिस प्रकार की लोकतांत्रिक प्रक्रिया उसका सम्मान करती है और कांग्रेस के आईटी विभाग के कर्नाटक के जो प्रमुख है श्री बत्सा उनका ट्वीट भी चुनाव आयोग की घोषणा के पहले आया और बाद में उनका उस ट्वीट का क्लेरिफिकेशन भी आया जिसमें कंफर्म हुआ है कि वो ट्वीट उन्होंने किया है तो निश्चित रूप से जो टीवी चैनल्स पे पहले से न्यूज चल रही थी ग्यारह बजकर छह मिनट या ग्यारह बजे के आसपास जो न्यूज फ्लैश हुई उसके आधार पर ये सोशल मीडिया के ट्वीट हुए Moving on, a Delhi court on Tuesday ordered attachment of properties of businessman Vijay Malia in Foreign Exchange Regulation Act violation case. Malia was declared a proclaimed offender for evading summons in money laundering case related to fair violation. The court directed attachment under Section 83 of the Criminal Procedure Court, which provides attachment of property of an absconding person. The court directed the attachment through Bengaluru Police Commissioner and sought a status report by 8th May. Earlier this year, the court had declared Malia proclaimed offender for not responding to summons in Pera case. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee on Monday met NCP Chief Sharad Pawar along with other political leaders from TDP, TRS and Shiva Sena. The TMC Supremo has been trying to weave a federal front ahead of 2019 polls. The move has triggered speculation of an alliance in political circles. Banerjee, who was in Delhi for three days, had an hour-long meeting with NCP chief and other party leaders at her office in the parliament. She also met with other leaders from opposition parties like TDP, TRS, SP, RJD, BJD, NC and JMM. She once again emphasized that the need of an hour is to have a state-wise strategy to defeat the BJP. We, we want to work together. 
हम नहीं नहीं ज्यादा है कि कोई कि आइसोलेट रहे सब एक साथ में काम करना चाहिए आई थिंक दैट जिधर में जो स्ट्रॉन्ग है उसको ही करना देना चाहिए अगर यूपी में मायावती जी अकेले स्ट्रॉन्ग है दे शुड वर्क टूगेदर दे शुड वर्क वी शुड हेल्प देम सपोज तमिलनाडु डी एम के लेट देम हेल्प वी हैव टू हेल्प देम लाइक दिस देर आर सम अदर स्टेट ऑल्सो टी डी पी लेट देम वी हैव टू हेल्प देम The Supreme Court on Tuesday termed absolutely illegal the interference by illegal assemblies like car panchayats and marriages of two consenting adults. The top court also laid down guidelines to prevent such intrusion. The apex court was also said its order would remain in force till a suitable legislation is enacted by the parliament. The apex court ruling came on a plea by NGO Shakti Vahini. The plea was moved in 2010 seeking protection of couples from honor killing. While reserving its verdict earlier this month, the court had observed that when Two consenting adults get married irrespective of the background. No relative or a third person can interfere or threaten or unleash violence against them. The apex court had also asked Harpen Shahid not to behave like conscience keeper of society and said that a marriage between the adult was governed by laws. No illegal bodies or no such kind of panchayat. अगर कोई शादी में विघन करती है जो टू कंसेंटिंग एडल्ट्स अगर शादी करते हैं आउट ऑफ चॉइस मैरिज जाते हैं तो उसमें किसी को वायलेंस करना या उनके बीच में विघन लाना इसको असंवैधानिक कह दिया गया है और कोर्ट ने प्रिवेंटिव मेजर्स प्यूनिटिव मेजर्स ये दोनों चीज़ों को लागू किया है नव इनकम टैक्स ऑफिस एंड आयकर सेवा केंद्र विल रिमेन ओपन ड्यूरिंग हॉलीडेज फ्रॉम मार्च ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी फर्स्ट टू फैसिलिटेट टैक्स पेयर बिफोर द एंड ऑफ करंट फाइनेंशियल ईयर The last date for filing returns, related returns for assessment year 2016-17 and 2017-18, and revised returns for the assessment year 2016-17 is March 31st, 2018. The ASK centres would also be kept open on these days, while March 29th and 30th are government holidays on account of Mahavir Jayanti and Good Friday, respectively. March 31, the last day of 2017-18 financial year, is Saturday. Banks will be shut from March 29th till 30. That's it and all on news tonight. Thanks for watching Ratsabha TV. Good night.